Let me start by saying what this guide series is and what it isn't, as well as who the videos are for. Feel free to skip this part. I'll leave timestamps in the description of every video. First of all, I'm going to be playing Dark Souls Remastered, since it's easier to obtain and the regular version isn't even available on Steam anymore. There may be some differences here and there, though you should be able to follow along if you're playing the Prepare to Die edition. I believe that the Souls games are best experienced with very little external information. However, I understand that it's extremely daunting. And to be honest, I wouldn't have gotten so into Dark Souls if I hadn't watched a few guides to get me into it first, and I don't regret doing that. As such, I will include notices to pause at certain points of my videos if you would like to progress on your own terms. You're meant to continue watching once you've got past the area, fight, etc., or just get fed up and want some help or advice. I will be following the intended path that the game wants players to do. I will also be including tips and tricks to get through areas, especially particularly difficult ones and I will be giving some leveling and equipment recommendations. These recommendations are meant to be generalized, to leave room for your own expression and experimentation. I will also include some things that you were never meant to know about, because one thing that makes this game so fun are all the little things that you can do if you know about them. You can consider it insight. If you'd rather not learn forbidden knowledge, I will also preface them with timestamps to skip that part of the video. I'll also avoid many optional and missable parts, such as optional bosses and areas. I may cover optional areas in the DLC, etc. at a later time, but for now I want to focus on getting through the main game. Feel free at any point to stop watching this series and progress on your own, until you get lost or stuck or just want to see some things you may have missed. My main goal is to help people enjoy the game who otherwise wouldn't, and while I know Dark Souls isn't exactly an obscure game at this point, and there have been many, many guides made throughout the years, I'd like to put my own spin on things. Maybe something I've made in my own style will help in a way that another video didn't. Let's start with character creation. For now, you should pick whatever looks and sounds the best to you. There really is no wrong answer. All choices here can reasonably complete the game. And if you really feel like you've messed up, try not to feel too bad about starting over. You can get through big chunks of the game pretty fast if you know what to do. And starting over with more knowledge and maybe a new build in mind is actually pretty fun. For your starting gift, if you want my suggestion, take the old witch ring. Besides a particularly difficult and lengthy process, this is the only way to get it. I'll explain its use when it's relevant, but don't feel like you have to pick it either. There are no wrong answers. The master key is also a very good choice, but for a first playthrough you may want to avoid it for now. It's worth noting that the Thief class starts with this gift as an extra bonus, so it's really up to you. Let's talk about our stats very briefly. Feel free to skip ahead if you'd rather not. There are 8 attributes. Put very simply and for convenience, the highest you should level up any attribute is 40, and the highest soul level, that is your character's level, you should consider for normal play is around 100 or 125. You can obviously go higher than that, but for a first time playthrough that's sufficient and hopefully gives you an idea of where we're headed. The main reason is because leveling past that requires many more souls, that is, experience and currency, and it can be annoying to farm for them. Again, there are some exceptions, but 40 is the soft cap for almost every stat. Beyond that are some diminishing returns. This all isn't 100% true, but it's helpful enough for now. I'd rather not let us get bogged down in stats too much when we haven't even played the game yet. Vitality and endurance are important for all playstyles. Vitality increases your health. The more times you can be hit, the more chances you have to survive. Endurance increases your stamina. You need enough to be able to perform actions. It also increases your equip load, letting you equip more and heavier gear. You can kind of think the heavier a piece of equipment, the more protective, dangerous, or useful it is, though this isn't always 100% true. Equipment load is important to consider because it affects your roll type. There is fast rolling, mid rolling, there's also fat rolling, and if your equip load is high enough, you won't even be able to roll at all. In general, you want to be fast rolling. To ensure that, you need to be at or below 25% of your maximum equip load. You can find that by multiplying your max equip load by 0.25. Mid rolling is more or less acceptable too, I've managed that. And with heavy enough armor and a sturdy enough shield, you won't even need to roll if you can just tank hits. My recommendations will most likely be to roll through attacks however. Attunement, Intelligence, and Faith are important for spellcasters. Attunement gives you more spell slots up to a certain amount. 
Intelligence allows you to use stronger spells and increases their effect. Faith allows you to use stronger miracles and increases their effect. Both Intelligence and Faith builds have aggressive and defensive slash utility spells, but Intelligence can be considered more aggressive, and Faith can be considered more defense slash utility oriented. There is also a casting type called Pyromancy, which doesn't use any stat and can be leveled up separately from your character's attributes. This is a great casting type for someone to pick up some spells without needing to invest into their character for it. Strength and Dexterity are required to use certain weapons. Some weapons will also have an Intelligence and Faith requirement, but those are the exception, not the rule. In general, the larger and heavier weapons require more strength and do more damage with more strength, and the lighter and faster weapons require more dexterity and do more damage with more dexterity. There's a handful of pretty great weapons of varying weight classes, so you shouldn't feel like you need to use a heavy weapon to do a lot of damage. And that leaves us with resistance. This stat is a joke, and you should absolutely not waste your levels in this, just take my word for it for now. The only stat besides all of those that is important to consider in regular play is Poise. Generally speaking, heavy armor has higher Poise and lighter armor has lower. Poise is necessary to tank through hits, and this is important because while being hit by an enemy isn't ideal, being hit and put into hit stun can cause you to be hit again, which is even worse. With too low of Poise, you can be stunlocked to death in the wrong situation, so it's worth considering equipping enough of it, unless you just never get hit, that'll work too. So that was a whole lot of information. When do I get to the part that's useful? For a build, you'll want to find the weapon you like. I'll recommend a variety throughout the series that you can try out. The following information is meant to give you some sort of guidance in where to put your level ups. For a melee character, which you should consider being for your first playthrough, if you want to be able to use almost every weapon in the game, you'll want at least 25 dexterity and 39 strength. Building your character like this to be able to use most or all of the weapons is known as a quality build. This doesn't include weapons that require faith and intelligence, but there are only 28 weapons in the game that do, out of around 136 weapons. If you take out the spellcasting tools like catalysts and talismans, that's only 11 weapons. If you take out the weapons that you're not likely to get due to being very rare or using moss souls, that's only 6 that will require intelligence or faith. Anyways, if you hold your weapon with 2 hands, you can also get away with 27 strength, and you'll only be missing out on 7 weapons. 2-handing the weapon will multiply your strength by 1.5 times. If you want to one-hand every weapon in the game, you'll need 58 strength, or 40 if you're okay with missing out on those 7 weapons that you'll probably never even see or use. As for dexterity, you can also stop at 20, and you'll only miss out on 5 weapons. One is a boss weapon, two are rare drops from enemies, and two are from the DLC. In short, for safety and comfort, aim for 27 strength and 20 dexterity and you'll be fine. Feel free to go above that for a bit more damage. Something to consider in Dark Souls, though, is that your stats should be considered the requirements to equip a weapon. The main damage will come from upgrading that weapon with upgrade materials. That's why I'm focusing so much on stat requirements specifically, instead of just recommending putting 40 into both strength and dexterity. Which isn't an awful idea, either. Getting a normal weapon to plus 10 out of plus 15 is easy enough, fortunately, and that will make most weapons very powerful. You can buy an unlimited amount of upgrade materials to get standard weapons to plus 10, and that's good. It will take 9 Titanite Shards and 9 Large Titanite Shards, which will cost between 41,400 and 45,000, depending on who you buy it from. That may sound like a lot, and it's not a little, but it's manageable. And finally, while I do recommend you play as a melee build while you're still getting used to the game, using a bow for some utility, if you want to use spells, you can comfortably stop at 25 for Intelligence and 24 for Faith. Though for Faith, you may want to consider going as high as 28 or 30, as there are some miracles with those requirements that you may want to use. If you want to use all sorceries or miracles, you'll need 50 in Intelligence or Faith. Stopping at 25 Intelligence will make 4 spells not usable, and stopping at 30 Faith will make 3 miracles not usable. Stopping at 24 Faith, you miss out on 8 miracles in total. It's your call. If you know what they are, Pursuers requires 32 Intelligence, and Wog needs 28 Faith while Sunlight and Dark Moon Blade both require 30. There's a link in the description to a website called Mugen Monkey. It's a character planner. This won't be very helpful when you're first starting, but it's extremely useful for planning out your character's build once you get more of an understanding of the game. Again, it can be quite fun to replay the game with a specific build in mind, just to have fun with it. I've left a link to a generalized build that will let you experiment with a variety of things. You can further specialize and optimize as you see fit. I know I just gave a bunch of information about mid to late game stuff. 
I'm just trying to prepare you to set you up for success as much as I can. Feel free to come back to this video when things might make more sense to you. I recommend that you don't overthink things right now. Just play at your own pace and try and enjoy the atmosphere and challenges. Talk to NPCs, read item descriptions, especially for key items. Try crazy things, make mistakes. You have permission to, you always will. Nothing you do can't be fixed later on, either in this playthrough or the next. Just try and be smart as well. Now, let's actually play the game. <laughs>